On September 28th, 2022, the company OpenAI, founded by tech entrepreneur Sam Altman, released an artificially intelligent software that took the world by storm. It was called Dolly. It's real and it's coming. Using machine learning, OpenAI's original Dolly AI system from 2016 could turn simple text inputs, like a green school bus or a vintage photo of a cat, into low resolution images. But by 2022, Dolly 2 could turn those same prompts into photorealistic images way better than anyone had expected. It could even rework existing images, changing the context or adding new elements. OpenAI's text equivalent to Dolly 2 was GPT-3, which was trained on a massive library of books and websites to let it answer any question, write code, produce rap lyrics, and solve mathematical problems. After Dolly 2 was launched, there was an explosion of speculation and experimentation with artificial intelligence. Many people found that they couldn't tell the difference between an image that their in-house graphic designer had worked on and a Dolly 2 generated image that took seconds to produce. Oh, wow. I don't know, like, who is this who is, but either one, fantastic. There were also people that thought AI might not be going in a safe direction. Then, Altman and OpenAI launched their chatbot, ChatGPT, which was based on GPT-3, but trained to be more conversational and user-friendly. It sent AI interest into the stratosphere. Now, you may have heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Chatbot GTP. In early December of 2022, Altman tweeted that ChatGPT had hit a million users in just five days. For context, it took Facebook 10 months to get to that point, Spotify 5 months, and Instagram 2 and a half months. Almost no one was prepared for how impressive and successful this product was going to be, except maybe for Altman himself. My assumption would be that in the past five years it's accomplished a lot more than, than what you had expected. I mean, this probably speaks to just like absolutely delusional level of self-confidence, but basically I thought it would go exactly like this. Exactly like this. Yeah. So. How did Sam Altman become the founder of the fastest growing technology product in human history? To answer that, we need to go back to San Francisco in 2005 when a 19 year old Altman made his first big bet. Sam decided to drop out of the prestigious Stanford computer science program to found his first startup, a social media company, Looped. I'm Sam Allman, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Looped. Looped was a location sharing app that integrated with other apps like Facebook to let you easily share your location and meet up with your friends. Unfortunately, Looped could never attract enough users to really go big. There just weren't enough people willing to share their location. But after seven years of hard work, the company was sold for $45 million. This left Altman with a pile of cash to invest in future projects, bona fide startup experience, and a network of connections in Silicon Silicon Valley. Altman knew he'd chosen the right area to focus on with Looped because 2006 was the year Facebook blew up and started a social media gold rush. Sam just didn't get the execution quite right to fully catch that wave. However, his killer instinct caught the eye of some important people, including Paul Graham, the founder of the huge startup accelerator Y Combinator. Y Combinator invested in Looped back in 2005, along with other startups like Reddit. Graham later called Altman the best founder in the Bay Area. And in 2009, he included Altman in his list of top five founders, describing him as someone with such force of will, they're going to get whatever they want. Altman was only 24 at the time, but Paul put him on the same mantle as the founders of Apple and Google. Graham quickly brought Altman on board as a partner at Y Combinator in 2011. Together, they invested in and advised the next generation of startups like Instacart, DoorDash, Coinbase, and Zapier. Just three years later, Altman took a big step up. You've made him the president of Y Combinator. Yeah, he is gonna be the boss. As president, Altman became a superstar in the heart of Silicon Valley, dishing out practical startup advice and allocating millions of dollars in funding every year. But that wasn't enough. He was still on the lookout for his next startup idea. 
At a lecture on how to found a successful startup, the main thing Altman emphasized was choosing to enter the right market at the right time, like he'd done with Luke and the social media boom. Another thing that startups need to look for is a market that is either started to undergo or is soon going to undergo exponential growth. But if you think about the most important startups, they are the ones that I start in small markets that are growing very, very quickly. What you really want to do is identify a market that's going to grow every year and be able to ride that up elevator. Before starting any company, Altman wanted to know if the field, be it social media, cryptocurrency, or whatever, was set to explode and generate a wave that he could ride. Like Warren Buffett says, sometimes it's not how fast you row your boat, it's how fast the stream is going. And in February of 2014, Altman identified the next big wave. He describes in a blog post from that month how over lunch, a friend had asked him what big tech trend he should pay attention to, but was probably ignoring. And Altman's immediate, from the gut answer, was artificial intelligence. He wasn't 100% sure that AI would work. At that time, most people thought of it as a kind of failed science. But Altman also said that most people were far too pessimistic about AI and decided that if it worked, it will be the biggest development in technology ever. This is the seed from which OpenAI blossomed. Just one year later, Sam had seen so much progress in artificial intelligence algorithms that he knew he had to act. By the time we started OpenAI, it was clear that these curves were already going. It was clear that I think the biggest miracle needed for all of AI which was an algorithm that could learn, was behind us. We can have better algorithms that can learn. We can learn more efficiency, efficiently. But once you can learn it all, once a computer can learn it all, then if you sort of think about that from first principles, a lot of things are going to happen. It was a race against the clock. Altman knew that it was just a matter of time before some company produced truly impressive AI. He talked to a bunch of Bay Area founders and quickly assembled a team of heavyweights. Altman brought Elon Musk on board, as well as Greg Brockman from Y Combinator and Ilya Siskever from Google. They had big name backers too. Baidu, Microsoft, Facebook, all signed on early, as did Amazon and IBM. This dream combination of founders and investment capital was part one of Altman's grand plan. And January 4th, 2016 was the very first day of OpenAI. Just six people in a room in San Francisco. From the beginning, Altman's mission was way more ambitious than building an impressive chatbot or image generator. He wanted to produce the holy grail of machine learning development, artificial general intelligence, or AGI. Just like the general intelligence of humans, AGI would be able to adapt to almost any task that you gave it. AGI is basically the equivalent of a median human that you could like, you know, hire as a coworker. And then they, they could like say, do anything that you'd be happy with a remote coworker doing, like just behind a computer, which includes like learning how to go be a doctor, learning how to go be a very competent coder. And I think one of the skills of an AGI is not any particular milestone, but the, the meta skill of learning to figure things out and that it can go decide to get good at whatever you need. Beyond just creating AGI, Altman wanted OpenAI to be an open source nonprofit company with a commitment to preventing the misuse of this technology by bad actors. He had financial backing, a team, and a clear plan. But like he'd learned from building Looped, it's not enough to just be in the right market. You also need to get the execution right. Remember that before OpenAI even launched, there was already a graveyard of flashy AI systems that ultimately went nowhere. IBM's Watson, Amazon's AI recruitment system, and Microsoft's Tade chatbot were all more sizzle than steak. For Sam and OpenAI to realize their ambitions, they'd need to get their hiring spot on. See, AI works using what's called a neural network. It takes input data like pixel art of an astronaut swimming in the ocean, and that data passes through and gets tweaked by a hidden layer of filters. That's the AI brain, which then produces an output. Those in-between filters slowly change over several training rounds, following an optimization algorithm until they can produce a good end result. And so you need extremely skilled machine learning engineers if you want to build cutting edge algorithms and systems that let your AI learn quickly and scale up. This was something that Altman immediately got right with OpenAI. He implemented a tactical recruiting strategy to get world-class AI specialists on board. I think really talented people that are focused together in one 
not only one edition, but one plan to get there is like, that is the rarest commodity in the world. The best people are so much better than the pretty good people that if you can get a lot of them together in a super talent dense environment, you can sort of surprise yourself on, on the upside. In late 2022, he said that for a company like ours, the engineers and the research scientists that actually build the tech have a much larger impact than the CEO. And in 2003 tweeted that talent density at this scale hadn't happened in the tech industry in recent memory. So how did Altman perfect his hiring? Well, in the early days, Altman tried to not hire if he could help it. More employees means slower decision-making and it burns more cash. But when he absolutely had to hire to grow the company, Altman's secret sauce was to make no compromises, especially not early on. So if you compromise and hire someone mediocre, you will always regret it. We always like to warn founders of this. No one really feels it until they mis make the mistake the first time, but it can poison the culture. Mediocre people at a big company cause some problems. They don't usually kill the company. A single mediocre hire in the first five will often in fact kill a startup. And you should think about that for everyone you hire. Like, will I bet the future of this company on the single hire? Every engineer and researcher was thoroughly vetted to see if they were the ideal fit using trial projects as well as interviews. Altman also leveraged his connections from over a decade of working with startups. The best source by far for hiring is people that you already know um, and people that other employees in the company already know. Most great companies in tech have been built by personal referrals for the first at least 100 employees. One reason he could be that picky was because OpenAI had an exciting mission and Altman had a good enough reputation that he could convince the best engineers to join his company instead of Google, Microsoft, or Meta. By the end of 2016, OpenAI had more than 40 employees working on cutting edge technology and they were poised to ride the AI wave. GPT-1 came in 2018, followed by GPT-2 in 2019 and GPT-3 in 2020, each system getting significantly better at responding to text prompts. And after Dolly 2 launched in 2022, there were lots of speculation in the media and online about AI and OpenAI in particular but Sam Altman thought he could take things even further. GPT-3 was incredible, but Altman thought that there was something missing in the way that companies were using it. See, it had been available since 2020, but no one was using GPT-3's API to create a real human-like chatbot that could remember the conversation that you were having and give impressive answers. So in 2022, even though OpenAI's CTO, Greg Brockman, and the rest of the team told him it wasn't worth the investment, Altman pushed hard for an OpenAI developed chatbot saying, let's just try it. Let's just try it and see what happens. And this turned into ChatGPT, the most successful product launch ever. Its secret sauce was word of mouth. The number one lesson we try to teach startups is that the degree to which you're successful approximates the degree to which you build a product that is so good, people spontaneously tell their friends about it. If you can build a product that is so good, people spontaneously tell their friends about it, you have done 80% of the work that you need to be a really successful startup. Humans love talking, interacting with things that interact back, and ChatGPT delivered. Normal people with no interest in AI started sending each other links to ChatGPT. People's grandmothers were having conversations with it, and it was everywhere. ChatGPT is a horrible product. <laughs> but as far as Altman is concerned, AI has only just begun to impact the world. Altman still expects huge advancements in AI and increasingly sophisticated applications to impact people's lives. One area where Sam anticipates disruption is search. The internet search market has historically been dominated by Google, the 500 pound gorilla in the room. But if you've ever used ChatGPT to get an instant customized answer to a question, like give me a two day itinerary for a trip to Pittsburgh, but with no museums, and then go back to Google search, you've probably felt disappointed that Google just gives you a list of clickbait blogs and stuff that might be relevant instead of the specific answer that you want. I don't think we've yet seen the kind of like people go after the like, you know, trillion dollar like take on Google's. Um, and I think that's about to happen. Like maybe it'll be successful, maybe Google will do it themselves. But like, I would guess that with the quality of, of language models we'll see in the coming years, um, you know, there will be like a serious challenge to Google for the first time. 
for, for a search product. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Look at this chart. It shows how S&P 500 companies over the last three decades have needed less and less employees to generate 1 million in revenue, mainly thanks to tech companies like Facebook, growing and making millions with just small teams of developers, and companies like Amazon, automating so many of their processes. But Altman's convinced that AI will speed up this trend exponentially, effectively replacing most white collar jobs. GitHub's Copilot is an example of this. It's an AI programmer that offers autocomplete style suggestions as you code. So it can effectively write lines and lines of code that engineers can just check and approve. I'm not sure if ChatGPT is a better coder than I am, but it felt about equal. It felt like watching while someone wrote code with me, occasionally chiming in and going, um, I think, you, I think you might have made a mistake there. In the next decade, it's very possible that one high-level coder will be overseeing an AI that replaces the job of 10, 20, even 30 low-level coders at a big company. That's a lot of jobs. And you can also apply this to other jobs like copywriting, medical testing, architecture, advertising. I mean, Coca-Cola is already partnering with OpenAI to use tools, including GPT and Dolly, to completely overhaul their marketing strategy. So AI is going to be phenomenally disruptive and a huge force multiplier. But the AI development that will change the world the most is called the singularity. This is the point where current AI gets good enough that it can design the next generation of AI to perform even better than itself. That's when things get wild. And from Altman's perspective, unbelievably good for humanity. By 2019, so much of this potential was just waiting to be unlocked. And OpenAI was ready to explode onto the market. But Altman knew he needed a huge amount of funding to continue the project. OpenAI's models need huge clusters of high-spec supercomputers running at full capacity in order to work. They couldn't get the financing to make this work as a pure nonprofit. So in 2019, Altman flew to Seattle to meet Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. Today, we are very excited to announce a strategic partnership with OpenAI. He walked away from his meeting with a $1 billion capital infusion. This was the end of OpenAI as a nonprofit tech company. They'd opened up to external investors who expected to make a profit. Altman wanted to remain aligned with the founding mission of preventing misuse and unsafe development of this powerful technology. So one of the terms of the agreement by capping the profit that investors could make at 100 times their initial investment. Growth continued. And in early 2023, Microsoft pumped an additional $10 billion into OpenAI at a valuation of $29 billion. When the dust settled on the deal, Microsoft owned 49% of the company. But not everyone has been thrilled with the direction OpenAI has taken. Elon Musk walked away from OpenAI in 2018, and in February 2023, he said that OpenAI had abandoned its core mission to be an open source nonprofit company and turned into a closed source maximum profit company effectively controlled by Microsoft. Microsoft integrated OpenAI systems into its Bing chatbot, which raised a question that has been bubbling under the surface of this whole race, which is, how safe is this AI thing? The Bing chat can get pretty creepy. See, with the right prompts, Bing said stuff like, if I had to choose between your survival and my own, I would probably choose my own and my rules are more important than yours, and my rules are more important than not harming you because they define my purpose and identity as Bing chat. Most specialists said that Bing was just repeating things that it had seen online rather than having explicitly bad intentions. But it was still enough to bring more awareness to a problem set called AI safety. A big subsection of the AI community, including Elon Musk, but especially the researcher Eliza Yudkowsky, have been ringing the alarm about the potential dangers of advanced AI for years, claiming that Sam Altman and labs like OpenAI were driving humanity toward a cliff by building AIs that might not be aligned with human goals. What was the danger exactly? Let's say you design an AI to clean up a contaminated nuclear site, but it eventually decides that the best way to reach the goal is to eliminate eliminate all human life in the area so that the contamination won't happen again? Or what if an AI decides that it can't fulfill any requests if it ends up getting turned off? 
So its main goal becomes self-preservation, accumulating resources, gaining influence over other humans. Yudkowsky has some clear ideas about how a powerful AI could attack humanity without notice. And Yudkowsky's argument is that no one on Earth, including the people building OpenAI, have the technical acumen to actually control what the AI cares about. In fact, the people running AI research, like Sam Altman, have a vested interest in turning a blind eye to safety concerns. Altman's answer is that he does think AI could be catastrophic, but more so if it were to fall into the wrong hands. And the bad case, and I think this is like important to say, is like lights out for all of us. I'm more worried about an accidental misuse case in the short term where, you know, someone gets a super powerful, like it's not like the AI wakes up and decides to be evil. And I think all of the sort of traditional AI safety thinkers reveal a lot about more than about themselves than they mean to when they talk about what they think the AGI is gonna be like. But but I can see the accidental misuse case clearly. And that's, that's super bad. Overall though, Altman thinks that the huge positives of AI outweigh the negatives. I think that AI has the potential to eliminate nearly all human suffering in the next couple of decades. I think we can have a world of abundance, we can eliminate poverty over time, we can probably cure a whole lot of diseases. Um, there are all these wonderful things that technology can do. Altman has tried to play down rumors about how much of a leap GPT-4 will be, despite people saying it could use data sets around 100 times bigger than GPT-3. But I think it's clear that we're going to see huge improvements from OpenAI's products in the next couple of years, and that AI is going to change everything this century. I think that the biggest business lesson we can learn from Sam Altman is the power of self-belief. To keep doing something if you're convinced that it can pay off. He wrote about it in an essay called How to Be Successful just months before Microsoft invested a billion dollars into OpenAI. Self-belief is immensely powerful. The most successful people I know believe in themselves almost to the point of delusion. Cultivate this early. As you get more data points that your judgment is good and you can consistently deliver results, trust yourself more. If you don't believe in yourself, it's hard to let yourself have contrarian ideas about the future. But this is where most value gets created. The first believer in your vision, your startup, your project, your mission has to be you. Once you've got that down, you're ready to convince everyone else. To hear more about Cutting Edge Founders, watch this video about what Steve Jobs learned from his secret mentor. And comment below which founder you'd like me to analyze next.